Beth with 50 Plus Beauty, and I'm so glad you're here with me to learn some great mascara application tips. Mascara is something that really completes our look, and with just a few tips and tweaks, we can make our mascara look even better. If you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll subscribe and click the little bell so you get notification of my future videos. That way you won't miss anything. Now, you may notice that my hair is a little different. First, I did get a cut, which I'm really, really happy about. I finally did that. But also, I'm wearing something kind of blingy. Compliments of the Square Bands people. They were so kind, they sent me these square bands. And as you can see, it's like a headband, but you can order it with and without bling. And of course, I would order it with a bling. <laughs> I always like a little extra rhinestones, a little extra sparkle. That's always good for me. They come in these cute little cloth envelopes. And this one is a white leopard one, which I really like. I did not put bling on that one just because it is blingy in and of itself. And the third one I really like because it is a tortoise shell one. And it is like this. It's got two rows of rhinestones on it. And I really, really like that one. I think that's neutral, but just a little bit of flash, which is always nice. And the neat thing about this is, you know how sometimes, ladies, you will wear your sunglasses because you really want your hair to have that kind of poof effect with the sunglasses? Well, now you don't have to do that anymore. You can get a square band, keep your hair back in the wind and whatever. The 60s influence is really big right now. And to me, this has a little bit of a 60s vibe. And in fact, my mother, back in the 60s or early 70s, she had a fall. They called it a fall back then. But she would always have a little plastic, plastic. headband and I think hers was a little bit wider than this, but this is a little bit of a throwback to the 60s, and I just think these are so super darling. If you'd like to learn more, there's a website link to the squarebands.com website, and there's also a discount code, and I think it's $3.99 off $20, and the discount code is 50 plus. I don't make anything on these if you use the code or don't use the code. I just think they're really cute, and I wanted to share that information with you. What I'm going to be doing today is sharing some mascara application techniques with you. In just a few minutes, I'm going to take this mascara off and show you those tips. But first, these are my three favorites right now. The first is the CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume. I absolutely love this. It really does not add length so much. It adds volume. And I'm using a great lash lengthening product. The link to that product is down below in the description. So I really don't need the length, but I really like volume. And I like volume without clumps. And this almost never has a clump. It is fabulous in terms of just giving you long, separated, wonderful lashes. In terms of my high end, I really like this Estee Lauder Sumptuous Extreme Mascara. And this is an absolutely wonderful one. Now this gives you that false eyelash look, but yet it is still not clumpy. It's just nice, thick lashes that are all separated. It's absolutely a beautiful mascara and it goes on very, very easily. The mascara that I'm going to be showing you today is one of my new favorites and this is the l'oreal voluminous lash paradise mascara and this one is getting rave reviews all over the internet and i can see why it is very much like the cover girl but really a little more dramatic it gives you a lot of volume but your lashes are beautifully separated and it gives you length too and so it has kind of a false eyelash look but not clumpy at all dark just deep lashes that are just very very attractive that's the mascara that i will be showing you today be right back Basically, I'm going to be showing you how I used to do my lashes versus how I do them now. The application tips that have helped me, I think, come to a better way to apply my mascara. Now, the one that I'm going to be using today is my current favorite from the drugstore. is the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise. I'll go ahead and apply this on both sides, but I'll use my older technique here before I came to YouTube and my newer technique here. In the past, I never really brushed my lashes, so they ended up pretty clumpy. So on this side, I will not brush out my lashes. On this side, I'll go ahead and brush my lashes, and I'm using a Tweezerman product that I really, really like, which is a metal eyelash comb. I'll show it to you right there. And it is just wonderful for separating the lashes, and I really like it because you can also go this way in addition to this way on it. Really gets those clumps out, really like that. Now, I never used to use an eyelash curler, so on this side, I will use no eyelash curler. I'll leave them as they are. But on this side, I'll be using my eyelash curler. And this is the Trim Eyelash Curler. Supposedly, it's, it's an easy grip handle, which, you know, you only do this for about five seconds. So I don't know that, that that is that necessary. What I do is I curl them right on top of the lash line. Hold one, two, three. And then I come out maybe about halfway. One, two, three. Uh, this time I'm just going to do it on this side and then I'll go ahead and get some of this Lash Paradise and I like to clean off the brush a little bit to get rid of any clumps if they're there and we'll just go ahead and we're going to do jiggles over here little jiggles little jiggly wiggles and you start at the base of the lash and really jiggle it around because you really want 
the base of the lashes to look thick. I'm going to jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Then you're going to come and jiggle a little bit on the top side. And as you can see, it's really starting to make the lashes look long. Do a little bit on the bottom. And I pretty much just jiggle the bottom with my tweezer man and just comb them out and separate the lashes a little bit. So you can see what kind of length and volume we're starting to generate over here. It's really pretty nice. So now we'll go back on this side and I'll just apply one coat over there. But again, no curling on that side, no separating. Don't use the lash comb at all. A little quicker. No jiggling either. Do the bottom. No jiggling on the bottom. I'm so used to jiggling, it's kind of hard not to do it. So there's the old eye, there's the new eye. Now we're going to go ahead and do one more coat on both sides. I generally just do a pretty thin coat the second time. I'm not into spidery lashes or very clumpy lashes. I like them to stay separated. Now I've got a little bit of a black dot in there. Huh, where is my... Oh, there it is. Okay, so we get that little black dot out of there. Q-tips are very, very helpful. Now I'm going to go in on the other side and add a second coat there. On this side, which is where I use the, the better technique, they're a little more separated, they're a little more natural looking. Okay, I'm finished with both sides. And on this side, I did the curling, I did the combing, I did the jiggle jiggle, and I really cleaned it up afterwards with a little comb. I think the lashes have a lot of volume, but they're separated and they look very natural. On this side, I didn't do any of the above, including the jiggle jiggle. I just put it on and you know didn't comb it out or anything like that. To me, it looks like I have about five eyelashes over here because all of them tended to clump together, which some people do like that look, but I really don't like that look. I really like it to look more separated and a little bit more natural, even with a lot of volume. Well, that's a look at my mascara application technique. Now, if you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll subscribe and click the little bell to receive notification of my future videos. That way you won't miss anything. Lately, I've been finishing up for the thought for the day. I go to this card deck, The Language of Letting Go, and that's really important for me, is to learn to let go. Okay, I'm gonna take these cards and just going to shuffle them up and see what feels good. Okay, this one feels good, and it is releasing anger toward family members. Okay, that's odd. I don't think I have any anger right now. But today I will accept the potent emotions I may feel towards members of my family. Well, that's certainly true. Sometimes that happens. And I'll be grateful for the lessons they're teaching me. That is so true. Even if I'm angry with them, maybe I have lessons to learn about my behavior or about their behavior. I accept the golden light of healing that's shining on all of us. Ooh, I like that one. I accept the golden light of healing that's shining on all of us. And you know that is so true in terms of our family relationships and our friendship relationships. There is a golden light of healing that if we will just step back, don't be angry, don't say things that we'll regret later, there is a golden light of healing that we can just invite into our hearts that can really help us. And the language of letting go is important because you know, in the first half of my life, I held onto things so tightly. I let things bug me. I didn't accept things. I was just trying to push my way and my will on the world. And in the second half, I really want to practice and get good at letting go, appreciating that I am here where God or the universe wants me to be. There's a reason for that. I can accept it, learn any lessons I need to learn, and move on down the road. Acceptance is one of the keys to us having a fabulous second half. Take care. See you next time.